you can you hear it thank you uh yet again i'm not so used to uh to foreign names so if i said a name uh incorrectly i'm so sorry beforehand so thank you uh, aliona for the introduction uh well let's get into topic uh we are going to talk about unit testing um in the .NET world so the title of the of the of this talk you've already seen it is how testable code translates into better architecture um First of all, before we start, uh, I introduce myself. Thank you again, Aliona. My name is Kyron is Kyron, Kyron Mesa. I'm an industry engineer and with a master in cybersecurity uh, from uh, Univer Universidad of Uyanes here in Chile. So yes, uh, I'm from Software Chile. Then you, there you can have my email, kmesa uh, at softwareinf.com. If you uh, have any questions, you want to contact me, or you have any like questions about unit testing or, in, or anything in the .NET world uh, from the backend side, I'm always open to receive questions, uh, suggestions. Everything is always welcome. So, uh, so yeah, you have, there. You have my 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 contact details. So the what is our agenda for today's talk? First, we are we are going to uh, give a very small introduction about cost-based testing and unit testing 101. Uh, I'm I'm aware that uh, this talk uh, is aiming for intermediate plus uh, members or for the audience, but it's always a good uh, a good idea to have a refresh of the concept that we are we are going to walk through. Naturally, uh, after the unit testing 101, we're going to talk about sorry uh, units and components and um, what do we do, what we do understand um, about thick units and thin units uh, in the unit testing world. And once we have an idea of of what is going to be the theoretical background, we are going to see on examples how uh, how testable code looks like uh, in a very cartoonish example and on and also sorry in a, in code examples, and then we are going to discuss uh, what is the impact of of the testable code in the software architecture. Now, why I want to uh, talk about a code based test code based testing. Uh, usually, when we learn about coding uh, from the from the ground up, we always know about the solid principles and object-oriented programming that we know to encapsulate all of our, all of our object objects. Sorry, and we try to follow these principles sometimes without like knowing what are we trying to achieve. Uh, we're all, we are used to say, hey, you need to make your objects encapsulated. Uh, you need to use polymorphism or inheritance or composition. But why do we want to do that? Naturally, there it appears the the, the principles of uh, the solid principles or the try to make your code modular or microservices or any like decision, I'm sorry, any design decision that comes uh, after that. But what if we switch the things a little bit? What if we, uh, what if we, instead of trying to achieve a good-looking code, not in quotes, we try to make a code testable? Why we want to make code testable? It will, like, um, we can see it as a consequence. As a consequence, we are going to achieve uh, the same principles, but with with an objective in hand, not only to follow best best practices or all of those definitions and principles that we are that we are taught or learn about. Now I want to give you a like an objective to to accomplish all of those best practices, quote unquote. So where 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 uh, are we uh, situated about the the uh, about the code base? I mean about the code base testing, yeah. If we see the software development cycle, this is something that we know about. We have the analysis of the requirements. What it, what does the client want? Um, how we uh, can achieve those requirements in a code? Then we come. We, then we come with the part of the UX and design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. I want to focus in this part between implementation and between testing. Why? Unit testing is a, it's a, like I want to say a practice. A method, maybe a methodology, is something that you do when you want to assure that you go, you go, sorry, does what you say it does. It's not testing per se, but it's not implementation or development uh, itself. So it's right in between. It's right in the frontier between implementation and testing. 
there uh, lies or uh, unit testing. Um, there lies unit testing and also integration testing and other of those uh, code based testing. Naturally, we we can encounter a lot of um, methods to test our code based on the code uh, to based on the code itself, and we are going to focus naturally in unit testing. I mean, in this branch that we call dynamic testing. Uh, we can cover uh, how the statement how the, how the statements are executed, the branches, and everything in between. Uh, just as a fun fact, when we set up for code reviews, for example, when we set up for code reviews or where you we are uh, making a pull request or something like that, we are basically doing a static testing of the code where we read the code, we try to ensure that uh, by reading the code, uh, well, sorry to repeat myself, by reading the code that the code is well uh, structured and it it's supposedly, supposedly, sorry, uh, does what it, it should be doing. But uh, there is a lot of difference between reading the code where it, it makes sense. Sometimes the code, ah, you have this line, yes. Then you have this, uh, this cycle, this statement. Yeah, it makes sense, it makes sense. But once you execute it, uh, it doesn't execute as you expect. So there enters dynamic testing. It's a way to uh, verify to verify sorry that you code um, during wrong time does what it's supposed to be doing. So let's back to unique testing 101. In the world of code based testing, we have unique integration and end to end testing. End to end testing, for example, is when um, I want to follow the full flow of an application. Let's say a web application. I have a small form where I enter a username, a password, or something or something like that. Uh, I don't want to test the code itself. I want to uh, to 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 test the interaction of it. So end to end is basically um, the top of the pyramid because uh, you are very agnostic to the code itself. Integration testing, uh, we're talking about code right now. Uh, in integration testing, you try to test that uh, if I have a piece of code, the same example, I have a form with user and password. At the code level, I want to ensure that when I enter the code, the user and password, uh, it consults or it calls the database uh, to ensure that uh, the user and password is being verified at the, at the database level and how it integrates the realized integration with my code. And units, that's our focus. Unit is trying to isolate each <clears throat> each unit, each unit of code, sorry, uh, to make sure that that unit itself um, behaves in the way that it's supposed to be behaving. Now, a unit, it's kind of hard to, de to, to define because it's not a method necessarily. It's not a controller. It's not uh, something like, oh, no, a, a unit is, I don't know, I don't have a dictionary. I don't have a dictionary definition of it because it depends a lot of on the code that you're working on. We naturally we are going to define it, and we are going to see some examples of units um, in in some code examples. So back to the unit that we are going to be focusing. It's unit testing itself. Unit testing is we can read the definition. Unit testing is a type of software testing that focuses on individual units or components or a system. Right, we talked about units. Why are we having these components? All right, I'm going to set aside for the next slides. The purpose of unit testing is to validate that each that unit of software, sorry, works as intended and meets the requirements. Yet again, I don't understand. Uh, this is very like a generic definition. This could apply to every kind of every kind of uh, of testing. Sorry. This can apply for integration testing, end-to-end -end testing, QA, or any test that uh, can comes that can come to our mind. So, yet again, I'm going to set this uh, for the next slides. Let's not confuse with integration testing because integration testing is trying to is trying to test the interaction between uh, two, three, uh, or more units or components. Uh, here we are not testing the unit itself. We are testing the interact the interaction, sorry, between units. So uh, we can argue that integration testing it's like an extension of unit testing, but it's something more complicated. I will do some examples, but we are go we're going to focus on unit testing, as I mentioned earlier. So le let's uh, focus on that one. So. I mentioned units, I mentioned components. Let's try to define 
what a unit is and what a component is. The best way to define it is not by words, it's try, it's by uh, some examples. So let's focus on this code base that I have here set up as an example. Uh, if you're asking, if you have doubts on, oh, sorry, if you have questions or, yeah, question is the right word. I'm using uh, JetBrains Writer, just a preference. I'm not a sponsor, hashtag not a sponsor, but I really like it because it streams like a lot of things that uh, Visual uh, Studio uh, does not. So just just for the sake of, sake of explaining. I have this a small uh, API example. What the, What is the purpose of this API? Let me show you on here. So REST countries API, it's, it, it is a, a small service. Uh, this is the REST countries API. It's a very small endpoint that, that we can use for, to set up examples and the endpoint that's available is very simple. If I if I want to consult about countries, I can I can just check uh, where's the endpoints. I can just call the endpoint and uh, obtain some collections of this endpoint. It's just for countries. If I want to search for Ukraine, I want to search for Chile, United States, or everything or er any country that comes to my mind, I can do it by here. So. It's a small repository of that. Now, naturally, I'm going to set up some some business logic on this uh, on on my application that's calling that repository. I'm going I'm going and we are going sorry to use that as a starting point. So I have this controller, the REST countries controller, that's going to control what I want to do, and I have some I have a very small endpoint to uh, get all of the countries. And be and set up sorry some for some filtering if I want to filter filter countries for population sorry by population by name if I want to paginate the results of if or if I want to sort the results it's everything here. Now what's where is the interesting part? If I focus on this method that is a task to get all of those countries. If I see it as a one piece of code, this is basically a unit because it has one responsibility, that's getting the result. It has like one purpose. It can maybe depend on other things. Yeah, but a unit can depend on, can have dependencies that uh, that's naturally. So uh, this method has only one and one purpose and that's it. And this unit, as we can see it, is, uh, it fits the definition of a unit. A unit, it's simply a piece of code, a method. Uh, it can be a method, a class, an extension, or everything that comes to our mind that has one purpose and only one purpose on our code base. Now, in the .NET world, and maybe in the Java world, I worked on Java before, but um, uh, I'm specializing more on the .NET world. Uh, we have to take this approach because the frameworks forces us to use this approach. We can have controllers that or methods that, ha that have more than one responsibility, but uh, that doesn't fit with the best practices of the of .NET itself. So we are kind of forced to act in that manner. So um, the first step to make units have one single responsibility, we are kind of following that principle by uh, like by inertia. But this unit is something that we'll call a, a thick unit. Why it is a thick unit? Because first, it has a lot of validation when we enter the flow of this unit. So for example, if I enter some parameters, let's say population, name, pagination, we can see that all of those fields are nullable. Uh, so if those fields are nullable, I, ca I can or need to check for them if are null or empty because based on the um, possible combinations of parameters that I'm um, giving to the to the method, I will follow uh, a lot of different approaches on how to on how I will get the results. So this is what we call a, a thick unit. Now, if I want to make this piece of code testable, I need to abstract this piece of code. 
I will I will mention this now. We will talk about this later in the presentation, but keep that in mind. The first uh, thing to achieve testable code is to abstract the um, is to abstract the the methods uh, by their own. What uh, do I mean? What uh, do I mean by that? Here I have exactly the same. Here I have exactly the same piece of code. Give me one second. It's loading. There is. There it is. So here I have exactly the same piece of code. I changed uh, to Visual Studio just to uh, show the difference. So I have the repository. I have the same endpoint. I have the same validations. But if we focus, if we focus on the ifs statements where we are checking for the null for the if the parameters are null or empty, instead of calling a service and trying to do everything in the same controller, I'm not, I'm not abstracting this controller by layers. So this makes the unit even thicker. Thick units, uh, they can follow the same principles, they can be modular, they can be abstracted. Even I can follow the um, code reusability principles to make some methods that allow me to reuse these pieces of code and for any other controller. I'm following those principles. But the big difference is that I'm not abstracting these pieces of code in another layers. And what makes this unit uh, difficult to test? It is making a very, very thick unit uh, by, 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 its, by its own. Because if I want to test, for example, that I'm entering the population and the name and the name uh, parameters, I need to somehow simulate the response of the repository and then simulate the, the flow that this code is uh, following inside the same controller. So that's something that's uh, that's a like something that we need to be uh, attentive. No, it's not attentive the word. Something what we need to keep an eye on it because we can create thin or thick units, but abstraction is the, is the first key uh, element to achieve testable code. Now, uh, if uh, some of you, uh, if some of you can remember, uh, I will mention this. When we are making unit tests, everything that's private on a controller or in a, on a piece of code is a, is an implementation detail. The purpose of unit testing is not is not to test or handle implementation details. Unit testing as a methodology is very like um, agnostic to the code itself. What do I mean with that? Uh, it's something like this. So that let me make this. Uh, a little bigger so i need a white whoops i need a white canvas there is so what do i what do i mean with that when i try to test for when i try to test for a a piece of code i only will uh focus or only will like um, worry about the input and only will worry about the output of it. And the output is going to be compared, compared to with, with, an, with an expected output. Everything that happens, happens in between is going to, uh, it needs to be handled as a black box. You don't care what are, what are the implementation details of a unit during unit testing. So creating thick units, it's going to to make uh, it's going to make this ag this agnosis of the code even harder. So those are the things that we need to keep in mind when we talk about unit thick units or thinner units. Now, in the context of a controller, yeah, basically when we talk about controllers, uh, basically every method inside a controller is going to be thick uh, by itself. Why? 
because uh, on .NET you're uh, without um, like being explicit about it, but here you're handling the HTTP client, the HTTP context, the HTTP context accessor, and a lot of the ASP.NET Core uh, aspect of the framework are handled by the controller itself. So um, trying to test a controller endpoint is going to be a, a real challenge. So I will talk about that later. So how can I test, or then, sorry, how can I test the, the part that I'm, that, that I'm worried about? I don't want to test that I'm able to call an endpoint. Why? Uh, because if I try to test that I'm able to call the uh, slash country endpoint, I'm testing the framework, not testing my code. Uh, although it can provide some benefit to test the framework, but the, the idea of having .NET as a framework supported by Microsoft is because Microsoft is making sure that calling endpoints is not something that will fail uh, <laughs> constantly. So testing for testing for the endpoint it makes no uh, it it gives no value. Where lies the value of unit testing? Testing the code that I'm implementing that I'm creating. What's the code that I'm creating? Well. If I'm calling the endpoint for the countries, I need to test that if I'm passing the parameter population or passing the parameter name, I can uh, expect that I can receive the, the results in an expected manner. How can I do this? Abstracting the code. How do I abstract this? Well, the, um, a common way to abstract this part of the code is Separate the control, uh, separate the controller part to only handle the HTTP request, maybe to add some, some validations in the inputs. But everything that everything that um, oh well, where is the now there it is and everything that's about our code or business logic needs to be abstracted in a separate class. What uh, what is that abstraction layer? The famous service layer. So this service layer that I'm calling right now is completely agnostic to the HTTP context because it only it, its only interest is the repository that I'm calling the data and what are what I'm doing with that data. If I'm if I'm filtering, if I'm I don't know paginating, if I'm repeating some code, everything can lie in the service layer. So this make this make the unit even thinner. Because if I'm focusing now in the service layer without worrying about the HTTP layer, now I can test this piece of code, making it making making it sorry a even thinner a thinner unit, and I don't have to worry about as I said everything that the controller uh, everything that the controller handles uh, there. Just give me one second because my cat is making some hey hey buddy there it is he's uh, uh he's i'm making some some noise around here <laughs> now uh where was i hey buddy you distract me oh you're so cute so uh yes this uh, the abstraction, abstracting the code in layers, service layer, or uh, or some other layer, it it allows us to make thinner units uh, separated by their con by their concerns. So test testing this unit is going to be a lot a lot more easy than testing the controller uh, as I mentioned before. Now, if I want to be nitpick about this, I can uh, yeah I can abstract this even on another layer. What's that another layer? Well, this is going to um, handle the business logic. If I have some validation again, if, if, if I have to sort the results or make another business decision, I can put it here on the service layer. But what about uh, some reusable part of the code? For example, the filtering. The filtering is not something necessarily uh, it's not something that's necessarily uh, tightly co coupled, sorry, to the business. So I can abstract it again in some uh, in some static method methods. Sorry, so I can create these static methods, make making them even more generic about them, 
So for example, I, here I'm receiving a collection. I don't know what's the a, a structure of this collection because I'm using a dynamic approach. So I can make this code even more reusable for future implementations that maybe they don't have to, they, they have no relation to the countries and can be used for any other repository. So I have an, a, so I have a third abstraction layer making this unit even more thin than the, than the previous ones because this uh, focuses on the filtering itself without business logic. So having this uh, this like approach on trying to make trying to make this code um, testable by making thin units in abstracted layers, it's allowing me to follow all of those principles that uh, talks about solid, uh, solid uh, principles, clean architecture, um, pro object-oriented programming, best practices, and everything in between. Not because I want to follow them, because I have an objective. What is the objective? Make this piece of code testable. Now, we are going to make some tests uh, for those units. Uh, uh, let me follow with the rest of the presentation and we are going to see some examples in action. Now, that's what we can call a unit. What about components and what's the relation uh, with components and integration testing? Um, in my experience uh, working a lot with unit testing, something that's overlooked about components that once we see the word component, we immediately th uh, think about uh, integration testing. Integration testing, it's a bit complicated because uh, I don't necessarily want to isolate each unit uh, in a in a like one in a one hundred percent manner. The idea of integration testing is to see how the it, the unit interacts in interacts uh, between them in a um, in a how do I say this in a scenario that's more similar to the, a real one. It's not testing in production, it's not testing with the code running, but trying to make the, the test uh, as, as similar as a real environment as possible. But component testing, it's trying to see the interaction between units when the units are isolated from every other external dependency and only allow the unit to interact with each other when the interaction is absolutely necessary. So for example, this service layer, this service layer, this, that allow us, for example, this one, get countries by name. This one, it's a component and not a, it's a component, not a unit, but I'm not doing interaction testing with this. Why? Because this unit depends on the static unit that I showed you earlier. So yes, the business purpose of this method is to get all the countries by name, but the purpose of this unit is actually to filter, there it is, is actually to filter all of the countries to get, get back the object of their collection with the countries uh, filtered. It's a unit that inherently depends on another unit, but I can unit test this one. In that case, although um, uh, these units are abstracted, if I want to test this part of the code, the service layer of the code, I need to do I need to do something like this. That's a component um, testing. I'm isolating each unit. Um, we'll erase them. You give me one second. I'm testing each unit isolated from every other external dependency, but I'm allowing those units to interact uh, between them. So yes, uh, if in a lot of a lot of um, articles or a lot of libraries or books or uh, sources of information are going to to the to to state that component testing. It's basically integration testing. And I'm no, I don't agree with that definition because uh, the idea of component testing is to follow the testing of the service layer that, that I'm implementing in my, in my application. Well, 
uh, hopefully, I can, hopefully it's, uh, I, I made myself clear on those differences. Well, with the, we talk about uh, thick versus thin units, I'm going to use the same like example. Here we have a login method. It has a single responsibility to allow the user to, to log in and to create a session cookie, I don't know, give a random number, a session ID, etc. It has only one purpose, but the way that it's implemented, it's difficult to abstract it more than uh, what's actually abstracted in this example. So it's a thick unit. And a thin unit can be something, a thin unit can be something so like uh, simple, like for example, oh, so for example, these ones. That's calling. That's calling the service layer or the static methods that that uh, depends on this piece of code. And the thin unit has a really small task. That's I don't know, filtering by name, then return the collection. It's very simple. So that makes a unit very thin in that regard. Now, how can we imagine? Uh, how how can we imagine this process of making testable code? Uh, I'm going to create a very cartoonish example, but hopefully it will uh, transmit what's the value on thinking on testable systems versus uh, just creating system that uh, covers a um, business requirement. So from Software Chile, my name is Cairo Mesa, and I have to be honest with you, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but we are the same company. Here in Chile, we are still new. I think the office start its operation on 2022. So uh, sadly, we still don't have a main office. I mean, we have a co-work office uh, for, for the moment, but uh, I'm, I'm touching wood because soon, trademark, we are going to have our own offices. But uh, I want to contribute to that purpose. So I will create an evacuation, an evacuation plan. What kind of equation plan for, for fire emergencies? I'm, I'm assigned that task. I'm thinking, all right, so fire emergencies, for example, if I hear the alarm, if I hear the alarm, sorry, everyone must uh, abandon their, I mean, focus on the alarm itself, stay calm, try to exit the building, not use elevators, use the exit emergencies and everything in between, right? I can achieve that business, that business purpose with this. Let's, let's try to, to read my plan. In the event of a fire, our fire evacuation plan requires our employees to immediately check their email for real-time instructions on the evacuation procedure. Procedure, sorry. This regarded the conventional wisdom of the avoiding elevators during such emergencies, employees are incurring. I'm kinda, kinda sorry, falling asleep, trying, uh, trying to sleep, uh, trying to sleep, trying to read on this plan. I mean, we can read this paragraph. This is this is complying with the business requirement. It's a very well written plan, but it misses something. What if I want to do a fire hazard um, simulation? This is something that it will be I don't know. It will be pasted in the wall. It will be on a training. It is if this sorry if I pass this to the employees as a fire hazard evacuation plan, it might. It might be overlooked. It's not like very, uh, it's not very uh, pretty to the eyes. I don't know how to say that, but uh, I don't know. It's hard to test something like this on a live, on a on a live or live event. Why? Because if I need to try to read each part like this paragraph, I, I'm losing it. Sure, I can test this. I can do my my evacuation plan. But everyone is going to read this paragraph from top to bottom. It's not separate. It's not separated. I ca I don't know if uh, someone is going to make the alarm uh, ring or so activate the alarm. Sorry, that's the the that's the the first problem. So in case of naturally in a case of fire event that drill happens due to due to this plan lack lack its testability this is most likely to happen. And yet again, this is complying with the business requirements, but the crucial part of this plan is, is not testable. Why is not testable? Because everything is in one unit. 
if I want to test this effectively to make sure that all employees or every collaborator or every person in the building follows this plan, uh, I will take the modular approach to, the, to this plan. So reviewing the plan, I'm making my evacuation plan 2.0, uh, refreshed, uh, reloaded, or every other adjective that comes to your mind. First of all, let's separate, let's separate concerns. Let's separate each, each item. It's the same as a controller or as a, or as a layer in, in the code. Every layer is going to have its name, service layer, factories, wrappers, I don't know, repositories. The idea to, the idea to each layer have its name is because I have a concept in my mind to know where to look for something when I want to test it or find it. The same for this evacuation plan. First, immediate action, evacuation protocol, uh, assembly points, special assistance, communication. I have key points, <clears throat> oh, sorry. I have key points to focus uh, when I want to test this plan. And now if I want to push, uh, sorry, if I want to make a fire hazard uh, simulation, we can focus on, on, the, on the plan. Uh, we can focus, sorry, on the whole plan as a whole simulation. Or, or we can make sure that each part of the plan is followed by its own unit. For example, let's, let's test the immediate action of the employees. Someone discovered a fire, it, set up a, it, it set up the alarm. I can focus if every employee stops what, what they are doing, listens to the alarm, stay calm, and start the, the evacuation protocol. Then in my, where I leave this, in my, well, I left it somewhere. In my notebook, um, as an, as an evalu evo evo I don't know how to say this, evaluator. Yes, as an evaluator, I can check that the first point of the protocol is check is passed or not passed. Immediate action, awareness. All right, awareness part, check. We can move to the next part, evacuation protocol. Do I see employees using elevators? Yes or no. Do I see the employees? Uh, do I see if the employees are aware of their exit points? Yes or no. So I can test that 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 uh, evacuation plan point by point, and I don't have to make a whole simulation to test the plan in action. I can follow this approach to test the plan point by point. And naturally, once I make sure that every point of this fire hazard evacuation is it's met, then I can create a whole simulation to see the interaction or, or to see the interaction, sorry, of each point in action. So that's the main idea of testable code. It's not only to comply with a business requirement, it's to try to make your, your system unit by unit, so I can test the units on, on their own, and also that will allow us to, to test the, um, the code, the platform, the application that I'm creating uh, as a whole and, uh, and by unit. Now, why, why I would I want, um, there, I will back to those uh, slides. I will back to these slides in another moment. So why would I want to create testable code? And that's actually a very, very good question. Someone may say that following this approach of trying to make units of code testable, it's TDD. If you don't know what TDD is, I can give you an, uh, a, quick, a quick, sorry, overview. TDD and... Naturally, this is the article in English. So if you happen to, to, to know about TDD test-driven development, this is not test-driven development. I have strong opinions about test-driven development. I don't like it because test-driven development uh, implies to create the test before creating the unit. And I mean, that's... That's something very difficult to achieve because during the development, uh, you know, you don't know what's the shape or what's the purpose of a unit uh, from the from the point 
from the start. Sometimes it evolves. Sometimes it needs to, I don't know, iterate over it like three, four, five, six times. So trying to make the test before making the unit for me, it's, uh, it have some niche cases. For example, if I have a performance goal, then I can create tests for achieve that performance goal, but I need a goal, a goal in the first hand. Now, so this is not test-driven development. This is unit testing. Setting that aside, why, why would I want to create a unit testing for my code? Um, for small projects, I don't want to. Why? Because it's going to take time. Uh, unit test, it requires, for, it requires the developer to create the test, to set up the framework, and create additional code that doesn't provide immediate value. And that's the key word, immediate value. Creating that unit test or integration test um, for the sake of it, it will not provide value to the business that I'm working uh, that I'm working on. But for larger code bases or for platforms that go that are going to be uh, to be maintained in the long run, let's say one, two, three, or five years, then unit test becomes your best ally. Why? Because it allows you to create a safety net on the changes that might occur in the future. So for example, on this, on this test, I'm testing that I'm able to, to filter countries by name. So I have some, I have some, uh, some cases, the, the filter must be case unsensitive. So all of, all of these examples sh should, uh, should return always the same country, Chile, independently of how it's written. Um, and if this changes in the future, for example, now I want to make the, the endpoint case sensitive. If I break something else, for example, if I break the ability to obtain partial results for a given, I don't know, uh, the three, the three first letters of a country, I need to make sure that I didn't break this functionality while I was implementing the chain for a case sensitive filter. So that's the value of unit testing It's the safety net because this platform is going to be maintained for years in the long run. Uh, for every change that's implemented on that platform, I need to make sure that the existing code doesn't break. So that's when, that's when I want that, that's when I will want would want sorry to create my unit tests. So yet again, why I want why would I want to create testable code? Because it, it's going to allow me to create unit tests and it's going to allow me to create this safety net for the code that's going to be maintained for uh, years in the long run. Now, the other consequences like using this approach on creating testable code is naturally that my architecture is going to look a lot more clean um, that if I follow, I don't know, this approach, because yet again, if I use this approach, I will el erase these folders. Everything is in the controller. I don't know where where the modules, where the original part of the code, where are the, um, the the service layer, everything, it's in the controller itself. So if in, in if in the future I want to add the ability to create, uh, if in the future I want to create, um, no, it's not create. Uh, it's get yeah, the countries by name case sensitive case sensitive there is thank you github copilot let me see if i can get oh uh, i don't know it, it doesn't allow me but anyways if i want to get the countries by name in a case sensitive manner i need to basically modify the whole controller and i don't know if i'm going to break the the functionalities that were previously uh created so that's uh, that's the main like goal on creating testable code. I want to create testable code to allow to be to be allowed to test for units. Those units are going to give me a safety net, and that safety net is going to uh, protect me for every breaking change for every new requirement that comes in the future. 
No. Uh, now, if we we have the the code, we have the code abstracted. We are we are creating the code based on some units. I talked like briefly about why I will not uh, I will not want to test for the controller, but for the service layer or everything that is in the in the lower layers, because I mentioned again in case uh, someone missed it. I don't want to test the capability of the framework to call an endpoint. I want to test the code that I'm creating and not the code that comes with the framework itself. So if I'm abstracting that those pieces of code here, I have the service uh, the services class, and it depends on the country's repository. How can I how can I test this? Yet again, unit testing. What uh, what it says? I need to isolate the units. And here, dependency injection is our best ally. Uh, when we use dependency injection in .NET, will not only make our code cleaner, but also will make our code testable. Yet again, this is something that's very promoted by .NET itself. So uh, today is basically a de facto standard to use the dependency injection uh, container of .NET. But in some cases, for example, legacy code, uh, we would want to refactor that uh, to be able to inject a dependency and then to be able to test it. Why, you might ask? Because here in the test, for example, I have, I here I have the main test class for the for that service layer. I need to create a an object that simulates the behavior of that dependency. So I am basically here, as you can see, I'm basically creating an instance of the country service, and I need to pass every like dependency in the constructor of that class, and because I have all of those dependencies abstracted or injected, I can create a mock of that repository. What is a mock? A mock is basically an object that simulates the behavior of a real uh, dependency. But if I don't have this dependency abstracted or injected, I cannot test this class again. Um, so that's what, why would I want, again, to try to create the service layer testable. How can I create, how can I make it testable? First, dependency injection. Every dependency, uh, every third party dependency, let's say repositories, uh, I don't know, the logger, like what kind of other example, databases, uh, I don't know, SAP, Salesforce, or every other service that you work, uh, that you can like integrate in the service layer. It's it is a basically mandatory, uh, but I don't want to so so harsh on it, on it. But it's basically a good idea to make it injectable, so then I can test this piece of code by creating some mocks of those objects, simulating their behaviors. Why would I want to isolate their real behavior? Because the test needs to be uh, the test needs to be runnable or executable without. Uh, let's say basically with an internet connection. So I can, I need to make sure that this test passes without even connecting to the real dependency. That's that's um, the idea of the isolation of the unit. So yet again, and I'm, I know I'm repeating a lot of myself, but that's the idea I want to transmit. I don't want to use the dependency injection container because it, it looks nice. I mean, it, it looks nice. So it makes the code cleaner, but I have a higher goal in mind. I want to make this piece of code testable for create the safety net. And if I'm not going to create, create the unit test, at least I'm complying with all of those development best practices that we are talked about in every part, like clean code, uh, or sorry, clean architecture, solid principles, et cetera, and et cetera. Naturally. Okay, Karen, we... I'm sorry uh, to interrupt you. We have uh, 10 minutes left, so, it's, so we should speed up a bit. Yeah, uh, I'm actually, thank you, Alina. I'm actually wrapping right now. The, I, I was about to start wrapping up the, the presentation. So thank you for the, for the heads up. Naturally, 
for the example that we showed earlier of the of the um, evacuation plan, we can imagine how those interns in uh, external dependency can can be simulated. For example, in the case of immediate action, I I would not want to set up the fire alarm because it's going to alert the whole uh, the whole building. And if I'm going, making the test, I don't know in the third floor only. I don't want to alert the whole and the whole like building because well, it's going to create a panic and a riot, and that's something that we don't want to create. So we can simulate the external dependency. We can simulate the fire alarm. I don't know, using a loudspeaker, a cell phone, or, hey, this is the fire drill example. The fire alarm is ringing and you can set up, a, I don't know, a speaker with some fire alarm uh, sound to simulate the real behavior. But, well, that's the, that's the, um, what can I say? That's the wrapping up of the the thing that I wanted to to transmit. Naturally, this will allow us to to create a very a very nice abstracted architecture, allowing us to separate each uh, each of their concerns. It will allow us to implement those abstraction layers or follow those solid principles, uh, just to make sure that every layer is abstracted from the other one, abstracting the layers abstracting each unit and and making each unit with its own purpose uh, on uh, on the code base will allow us to uh, effectively test that piece of code that piece of code might or not uh, give us the safety net for future requirements and uh, by doing that unit testing approach i will make like uh, for a consequence also, i mean by consequence i will achieve this um the best practices of clean architecture and solid principles without even think about those principles itself. If I want to follow the classic approach, I will need to think constantly in the single responsibility, open close, a substitution, interface in, in interface inversion or interface, oh, sorry, pardon, um, interface segregation or composition or dependency inversion or dependency injection principle. And think about those principles might give you a little bit of headache. But if you think the other way, let's try to make this code testable. How can I test this? Well, abstract one on each part, indirectly or by consequence, you are going to follow these principles without even think about uh, all of those uh, all of those principles. Naturally, unit test uh, in every platform it's a journey by itself. So um, I will encourage you to learn more about unit testing. I know that unit testing is not for every project because smaller ones uh, might not give an immediate value, but for the bigger ones or the ones that are going to be maintained in the long run, unit testing, it's a really, really uh, provides, sorry, a really great value on making sure that your platform is maintainable in the long term. And if, if everything uh, breaks, you have well this safety net that's going to tell you, hey, you made this change, this broke. Please fix it. So then in production, you are not going to encounter uh, surprises or things like that. Thank you very much to you all for listening. Hope uh, you enjoyed this talk as much as I enjoyed making it. So thank you a lot. Thank you, Karen. Uh, guys, uh, it's time to questions. Uh, so if ever, um, if uh, someone has any questions, please unmute and ask or use chat or hey, raise your hand. Uh, let's discuss this topic. No questions. <laughs>